Hello and welcome to the Out of the Sandbox video guide to the homepage video feature. Specifically, we're going to be talking about this feature on the parallax theme, but if you have an updated version of an Out of the Sandbox theme, it's likely that your homepage has a video feature as well, and the settings are going to be very similar to the settings that we're going to be talking about today. So here's the Support Center article that you can look up. I'm going to paste this link in the description if you'd like to follow along. We're going to go ahead and jump right in here. So here is my Shopify admin panel. And to access these video settings, I'm going to go to Themes, Customize Theme, and right here to the Homepage Banner Images setting. Specifically under the Banner 1 settings, because it's the first banner of the Parallax theme that can display a video, specifically. Uh, the other banners can have the Parallax style scrolling effect, but they do not display a video. Scrolling down from the first banner image settings, we get to this first setting here, Enable Banner Video, which is the first setting to enable to have this feature display. So I'm going to go ahead and enable it and see what occurs. So the video is enabled, but can't really tell that it's there. That's because you need to click on the banner image to trigger the video. As this might not be obvious to your shoppers, it's advised that you add some button text to indicate that clicking the button would trigger the video. Play. Video would be a great caption to use, which adds the button to the banner image. Really, you can click anywhere on the banner image to trigger the video, but adding that button will call your shoppers to action to really make it happen. And there it is. So this video is appearing full width, and the full height of the video is appearing. There's no black bars on the top and bottom. The full aspect ratio is being respected. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the next section of video settings, and that's the video source. So we have the option of using a YouTube video, a Vimeo video, or an HTML5 video. These source settings are linked with these settings down here, which are the video ID settings if you're using a YouTube or a Vimeo video, or the URL settings if you're using an HTML5 video. I'm going to show you where to find those on these various services. So for Vimeo, here's a... Here's the actual video on Vimeo. You would copy this string of digits here at the end of the URL, and you'd paste it into the settings, which is what we've done here for the example. Similarly, on YouTube, you would jump over here, and you would copy this alphanumerical code that appears after the equal sign at the end of the URL. So you'd copy that into this field here, whether it's Vimeo or YouTube, you use the same ID field. You'd switch up your source, and then as our preview reloads here on the left, we can go ahead and click that button, and there's the video that we just added from YouTube. Great. If you are using an HTML5 video, the video is going to need to be hosted somewhere so that you can generate a URL to paste into this setting. You can host some videos on Shopify, and here's how. So you jump over here to Settings, and in Settings you'll find the Files tab, and in files, you can upload files that are less than, I believe it's 20 megabytes in size. I've uploaded this video here. It's 19.3 megabytes. If I tried a couple of other videos that were a little bit larger, and I got cut off. So I'm pretty sure that it's a 20 megabyte limit. If you have videos that are larger than 20 megabytes, you're going to need to find a third-party service to host the video and generate this URL for you. But what you need at the end of the day is a URL with this MP4 file um, expressed within it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and bring it over into my settings. And I'm going to switch my source to this HTML5 video and let my whole preview here reload on the left. It's suggested that for maximum compatibility that you also add an OGV file URL here, but I've had no problem using just an MP4 file on uh, modern browsers and on modern devices. So uh, I don't have an OGV file URL for my example, so we're just going to stick with this MP4 example. And again, as I click on the banner image, the uh, video appears without issue. All right, let's take a look at this next section of video settings here, starting with this auto loop video setting. I've restored the uh, default video here. And to show you auto loop, we're just going to fast forward to the end of the video. Spoiler alert. And as you see, as it reaches the end of the timeline, the video automatically starts again from the beginning. Pretty self-explanatory. If you had any sort of video background effect, it doesn't even need to be a very long video, and you could have it play indefinitely um, in this position. 
following auto loop video, we've got the auto play video feature. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that and probably self-explanatory as well as the page loads the video starts to play automatically, not requiring the shopper to click on the banner image or on the button. But as a big note on this autoplay video uh, feature, autoplay video applies specifically to desktops. Desktop machines are very powerful and they have the ability of serving up this automatically playing content and it's a great experience whenever you're there in front of a big screen. However, on mobile devices and on tablet devices, autoplay video is not a feature. It's not something that happens on mobile devices. It's not something that happens on tablets because as you're using these smaller devices, you've got your bandwidth to concern yourself with and your battery power, all of these things. And the last thing you want is to be inundated with all of this automatically playing content. So instead, on mobile, even with autoplay video enabled, the shopper is greeted with the first banner image and tapping on the banner image will then trigger the video to play. So there is no automatic playing of video on tablet or mobile devices. With that covered, let's jump down to this next setting here, which is display heading over video. So this is linked with these settings up here, the first banner image heading, subheading, alignment, and button text settings will all remain on the video as the video plays. So we'll go ahead and display heading over video, remove autoplay, allow the preview to reload. As you see, we've got the parallax Shopify theme heading still appearing over the, over the video as it plays. Furthermore to that, we've got this darken video option. The darkening of the video, it will also apply to the first banner image, but then that darkening carries through to the video playback as well. Wonderful. So we've got uh, the next section of settings to discuss here would be these height and width settings. So I'm just going to undo and clear all my changes and start with a fresh example to show you when and why you would want to use these settings here. So first and foremost, enable the banner video. And I'm going to show you here. Here is the sample video that we've been using on Vimeo. It has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is the proportion of the width to the height of the video. Other videos may have different proportions and different aspect ratios, such as this example here, which shows a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. On Vimeo, it displays without any issue. You can tell that it's a little bit wider than the other example. However, whenever I take this video ID and I bring it into my settings to replace the default video, and I still have 500 by 281, which is the same aspect ratio as 16 by 9, and I trigger the video, we end up with these black bars to the top and bottom of the video. As such, we need to enter the actual aspect ratio into uh, these settings. So again, it was 2.35 to 1. I'm going to go ahead and enter that exactly. 2.35 to 1. And then allow the preview to reload. And then as I trigger this video again, we see that it is displaying full width. And we can also see the full height of the image without any black bars at the top or bottom. So if you have a video that does not have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you're going to want to change these settings here to represent that. Um, additionally, if you've uploaded a video with odd or with a different, as a different aspect ratio to YouTube, YouTube will automatically force that video into a 16 by 9 aspect ratio for the most part. So if you were to bring this over to the theme and you wanted to get rid of the black bars that were automatically added by YouTube, you could again enter the exact aspect ratio into this field, paste in your video ID, allow the preview to reload. And as you see the black bar, oh, sorry, I need to change that up to YouTube. And as you see the black bars that were auto added automatically on YouTube, are then, in a sense, removed by the theme. So that's a great way to sort of get around YouTube reconfiguring the aspect ratio of your videos. So that covers all of these video settings. If you had any questions about how to set up this video, jump over to the support center where we have an article about this. If you hit any, any snags, you can jump over to this email us form 
or send in a support request to support at outofthesandbox.com, and one of the helpful representatives at Out of the Sandbox will be in touch in no time with a helpful response. Thank you very much for joining me for this helpful, friendly walkthrough video. My name is Sean Campbell. Take care. <laughs>